Hey guys! So today we're not gonna talk, not even a little, we're going to listen. We're going to listen to me and my co-worker, my actual team, team member, John, talk a little bit about his background in programming, how he started out and kind of how he got to where he is today. So hopefully you find this interesting. Let's listen in. So you're now officially being recorded. How does it feel? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it feels okay. Or oh, great. Because right? <laughs> you look, you kind of look like you, I'm, I'm your um, police or your uh, parole officer, and I'm just gonna check in that you've been staying clean, not putting anything up your arm or stuff like that. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I, I'm a, I, I'd like to think that I would be a pretty cool parole officer. You know, you want to smoke some weed or something like that. I'm kind of okay with that, just as long as you're not killing people and like stealing their shit, right? But like honestly, the so I'm gonna just be sitting here and eat while you, for some reason, choose not to, and that's fine. Like uh, I'm okay with that. But I would love to hear like, uh, so how long for how long have you been programming now? Uh, okay, let's count. Uh, I've been at Mina for uh, almost three years, yep. soonish. Uh, and then I was at my previous office for around eight years plus. Eight years? Yep. Holy shit, dude! So, around 11 years, I would say now, yeah. 11 years? Oh yes. my god, dude. Like, I, I you didn't think that, right? No, I didn't <laughs> think that. What is going on? I should have been better. <laughs> that's, <laughs> by, not by this was, I was point. Not, that's not what I was saying. I was not trying to say that you should have been better. I was just very shocked that you had wor been working for so long. I mean, you mean, dude, did you like start working when you just came out of it? Like, you, you, you must have been working since you were five. No. Or is it that you just have that youthful look to you. This is what I'm telling you. I'm you 37 years old, so... Uh, Dude, you could have been in The Sopranos. I swear <laughs> to God that you could have been one of, like, one of those mob guys. You look like one of those guys. Like, you're very nice and like... I'm mellow, too and nice. All of a sudden, exactly. And then all of a sudden, you walk me into a room and shoot me in the back of the head. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. exactly you. <laughs> But I haven't had the reason to do that yet. So. No, thank <laughs> God for that. Thank God for that. Because honestly, God, I would shit my pants if you just told me one day, hey, Frederick, uh, we're going to have to talk. That, uh, I swear. You have you have such a mellow, mellow like uh, attitude. And you're, what is it they used to t usually tell you? Like you're the most relaxed person on earth? Oh, yeah, that's my... I don't know, not nickname, but the, the description of me in the team Yes, page. your team description. Like the, That's exactly who you are. The calmest face on earth. Or yes, uh, yes, you are. Something like that. Yeah. But so 11 years of software development. So that's a yeah. pretty hefty. Like, so, but how did like, wh when did your interest in programming start? Uh, it started at the university. Okay. So, yeah, 11 years. Then Were you studying computer science? Uh, no. So... But I'm just counting backwards, so 37, which, which means I started to work when I was 26. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I like graduated from high school, uh, I uh, applied for the university. Uh, I was like came in to, yeah. to the university, and then yep. uh, I stayed for two weeks or something. You were accepted to the university. Accepted exactly. Uh, and yeah, it was for the chemistry uh, program. Oh, cool! Basically, yeah. But uh, really, was I didn't. Was it here in Gothenburg? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, cool. I never lived in another city and then Gothenburg. So okay, I, so you. I will probably not leave Gothenburg for my entire <laughs> life. But uh, yeah, that's another story. It's a very nice city. It's it a, is. It's very nice. It is. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, Back then, the university wasn't my thing. Like, uh, I don't know. You didn't uh, like chemistry. I didn't like uh, the future plans of studying for five years to uh, <laughs> get an education. I, 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 I can relate to, to, to that. I yeah. had a very similar feeling when I was when gone, went to the university. Yep. Okay. So then I went on to just uh, continue work uh, in the postal office, you can say. Yeah. Uh, sort of. Um, you were a postman. Ah, uh, yeah, postman, but uh, yeah, 
not like delivering mails more uh, work than the no, big no no the scum they deliver mail <laughs> you were much more important than that you were upper management weren't you no uh, <laughs> i was on the floor for you sure were, you were on the floor yeah you were okay lower middle management then but short story we got uh, all the invoices like from big companies Mm-hmm. on uh, digital uh, data files yeah. and then we printed them and when they left us they were like in envelopes basically so Ooh. from digital format to envelopes and then someone sorted the envelopes and you uh, were a math mails fu- yeah. you were a math function that's what you were yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes very <laughs> much <you. laughs> input digital uh, yeah. invoice output Paper. invoice in envelope <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's that true. sounds absolutely riveting. And that's where my programming now <laughs> interest started. Uh, no, but uh, I don't know. After five, six years or so at the post office. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, they were going to close down that part uh, as well, yeah. which uh, like gave me a, a little bit of a push uh, yeah. as well. Uh, this, this, you were working for the original post office here in Sweden, right? And they shut all of that down not that many years ago, so that uh, other other distributors could actually take part. Perhaps I'm not sure. Back it doesn't then really it matter. W- I was no. just you, wondering. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I started to <laughs> sort of seeking what should I do. I really had no idea. So uh, I went with the sort of. Uh, what do you call it? Like the science uh, track again, yeah. because I liked uh, math in school. So you then liked math? Yes, I oh did. My God, yep. we could not be more different. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then I applied for the math program on the university. And wow. half a year before that, uh, I actually took uh, another course, which was, was more preparing course for the university. For, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I, I've heard about this. Uh, yeah. And just to be clear, I like math. I just suck at it. So uh, usually that sort of course that you're talking about, that's for me. That's for me too. Like I, I kind of suck at it as well. <laughs> 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 but it's fun. No, I, I was good in high school. Uh, okay. But uh, high school and university math is two different worlds, I would say. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, you are not really prepared for the uni- university in high school. But uh, yeah. So, uh, but the first year on the math program. Yeah. Uh, so we had a usual... You should have an entire year. Hmm? You did it for an entire year. Uh, yep, or one and a half actually, because I took the preparation course as okay. well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the second uh, semester, do you say that? Yeah, uh, term semester. Exactly. We had to uh, take some uh, programming course, like just introduction programming. You had to as part of. Exactly, the it was part of the program. Okay. Uh, so it was one functional uh, course. Haskell. Was it a, of course it and is. We, it's Chalmers, right? Yep. Yes. And like everyone else at Chalmers, uh, we build a Sudoku solver. <laughs> uh, I've heard that very it's very common. So uh, yeah, they probably ran that ex- exercise for. <laughs> yep. In high school, you learn uh, to make a clock in C uh, or something like uh-huh. that. So, yeah. Uh, and then it was one uh, object-oriented uh, programming course in Java. Java with Swing, I think it was, and then we. Oh, Swing! Yes. No fancy, <laughs> fancy Java FX. No, no, no. We're g- we, 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 Java we, with Swing, we. and then uh, we built a uh, booking system for cinema tickets. Uh, very simple uh, yes. booking system. Uh, but still. I, I made. I think I made car toll application. Not like, not booking system. We just booked plane tickets and stuff like that, and like tolls for cars and stuff. Yep. A crud application, basically. Yeah. Oh, I don't really remember, but it was not even crowd. I think it was more selecting the seats in the cinema. There was no database. As I remember, it was more UI and Uh just some logic. We, uh, I'm not sure, but I don't think we persisted anything. Okay. Uh, But anyway, so before those two courses, I actually complained a little bit. Like, okay. You complained? Yeah, I did. Oh, I complain, God. but <laughs> come on, I was I was a little bit like this. Uh, okay, I'm going. I, I'm studying in the math program, and here I'm like this second you semester. I need to take some other subject courses or like programming courses, which okay. Uh, you weren't happy with that they were kind of diluting, like or yeah, a little bit, or like yeah, I, I wasn't 
prepare for that. I get it. Uh, and also, I've never been this computer kid uh, you never, at home. You never didn't play computer games? Or yeah, I did to some extent. But Counter-Strike. A little bit, Counter-Strike. Little and, bit, uh, yes. But mostly, I would say, uh, TV games like Nintendo. All Nintendo? The, all the Nintendo series, from oh. NES to Game Boy to Super Nintendo. I feel such a connection to you right now, yes. Uh, I've pl- played, uh, honest to God, dude, until I became, uh, until I started doing programming, I swear to you, I cannot remember a day, a single day, where I didn't spend at least four hours playing some video game or computer game or something like that. I've been doing it since I was, like, eight. All right, yeah. I love it. Yeah. absolutely love it. And then my brother has had an Amiga uh, uh, 500. It was very fun to to play games with. Okay. That oh, that was actually the first time I programmed something on the Amiga. On the Amiga? Okay. That's weird. Because I, I really wasn't into computers in that sense. Like, I, yeah, my mom had a 486 that we could use to, I don't know, play some uh, uh, crappy games. But on the Amiga, I actually programmed, uh, what do you call it? Air balloon? An air balloon? That went from the left bottom corner to the upper right corner. <laughs> And how I programmed that was just typing whatever was in a book, like uh, the Amiga programming book. I just typed the pages that were in the book, and then yeah, the program ran. But, uh, well, that's it, I'm <laughs> guessing how you start. Everybody kind of starts. Like, at least that's how, how I did it. Uh, like, when I was learning HTML and CSS and stuff like that, it was kind of, it came from a book. Like, yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, oh, this tag here. If I put that in this file and then I open that file in my browser, it shows the text. Wow. Yeah. But everybody has to start somewhere. Exactly. But and now when I'm talking about it, I actually realized, okay, I was a little bit interested, maybe. I had done some Dreamweaver web pages and that kind of stuff earlier than uh, when I was in the university. But in the university, it was the first time I really programmed or had to uh, face programming for okay. real, I would say. And yeah, but you uh, were unhappy with it because you were a little bit. Math, it math, was math major. Exactly, it was unexpected. But uh, what, what, what was the what was the plan there? Like, because uh, you know, usually at least that's what I've heard. Like, usually if you go into math, you like I mean, it's a very abstract field, and you can do a lot of different things with it. But at the end of such an education, you may not necessarily have like a career path forward. Like, oh, <laughs> now I'm gonna do statistics, or I'm gonna yeah. work in like. Uh, data analysis or something like that so what was like what was the plan i had no plan you had you just did yeah. it just yeah and, like it. and that's a common uh, reoccurring thing in my life i have, <laughs> have no plan <laughs> there is like i think that's a very recurring thing for most people who go yeah. to high to university the worst thing i know is when like i ask i've talked to so many people about it and i've asked them like well, so what's the goal here like what's the plan well, no, I don't really know. I had to pick something, so I just did it. I'm like, so why, the, why the hell are you... I can, and here pick it, something. Here, here it's for free. But, you mean, in the other countries, it costs you tons. Uh, your parents and yourself, like, it's a major financial yep. investment. So, True. I mean, at least you should have some, some idea what you're going to do with this, because otherwise you're just wasting money. Like, some thought. Of course. But, uh, yeah, it was more like that. Yeah, just but pick, that's okay. pick something and something that you think you are interested in, yeah. um, at least. Yeah. Uh, and yes, like when you are f- finished with your math studies, it's like statistics and uh, yeah, I don't Analysis know. Analysis or yeah. maybe you continue your education, you go into accounting or finance yeah. or something. Or educating yourself, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, a I have a friend, I mean, the, the, and, but he, the, as I was saying, like, usually I have this, like, you know, thought that okay you education should have a purpose right and he 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 of all people he went into japanese religion or like religious studies in japanese and i mean this guy i mean he has or he i told him like dude there's like maybe two jobs in the entire world that or like where you will be applicable for this and he said yeah but i don't care because i love it and i said yeah i respect that if you he because he's really interested into the field so he's willing to know that he's going to work very you have to work very hard to you know to to get to get a job or to be able to do this but you know he's moved down to japan and he's like yep. surviving and he's doing what he loves and that's perfect so nice 
yeah. try to become a singer or <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I mean, there are you, fields where it's very hard to yes, <laughs> succeed. It should be okay. Like it, it, as long as the person in question it really like loves it. Like because I, I have the saying where I say that if if you enjoy every step of the journey, it doesn't really matter where you end up. And if that is your life, if you are okay with, if you're truly happy as let's say that you are an actor or you want to be a mathematician or something like that, and you're happy as doing this and maybe you're not able to support yourself for full time, but that doesn't matter because the time that you can actually spend on the thing that you love is, the th is actually giving you that value, then fucking go for it. Yep. You know, nobody measures, like, the only people who measure success by the, the the magnitude of how much fame or fortune you acquire or everybody else it comes down to what you measure yeah but then it's also scary to go that path for some people is. like uh, yeah and that's fine that's fine as well you need it to feel safety and then you go for a more uh, highly likely succeed uh, yes, success there's path always <laughs> a compromise. there's always a compromise along the way that's that's for sure but what i'm saying is that Quite a lot of people, like, compromising is not the same thing as not following your dream. Compromising is fine. What I'm saying is that if if you have no idea what you're doing and you're just basically going to a, a university without, like, I'm not saying that you should have a plan. I'm just saying that, <coughs> you know, think about it. I mean, if, if you don't, if you're not passionate about it, if you don't care and stuff like that, yeah, sure, getting a higher education might be the way that you figured that stuff out. But you should really focus on trying to figure out what it is that you want. Yep. So when did you get to that point? Because you started with mathematics and then you were kind of like, oh, this programming thing was introduced on you. And then ha what happened? Because you did yeah. actually become a programmer. Because I exactly. worked with you but, uh, every that's, day. That's the key. When we took those programming courses, then it was when the, I don't know, coin fell into the <laughs> pocket or yeah. whatever you <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the penny dropped is the yeah, okay. term. Yeah. You realize that it, shit. it clicked. It uh, clicked, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was okay. I shouldn't say the most fun thing I ever done, but it you was You can be emotional, dude. No, no, no but it, it was really something fun and it was all about solving problem solving in a fun way. Yeah. Like I've always been uh, or enjoying I don't know, perhaps not crosswords, but like you solving yeah, kind of puzzles and that yeah. kind of stuff. So and this was, yeah, I don't know, maths is just solving very complicated uh, exercises for uh, basically no reason or it felt a that's little bit pointless. Feels, but that's yeah, like of course, yeah. that's the feeling in in I that stage. I <laughs> want to say this thing because I've felt this way since forever about mathematics. I think that the way that mathematics is being taught is a little bit incorrect because if you look at mathematics and programming, they are extremely similar in the fashion that all right, they're solving one is solving a theoretical problem and one is solving like a computational problem or something that you use a computer for. And what I'm saying is that the but this the, that excitement I would feel I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that if I had more of an aptitude for mathematics and a deeper interest, I would have felt the exact same way about mathematics because when you can actually use it to like solve complicated problems, you can actually apply it and see the practical value in this knowledge. It must be very rewarding. That's how I feel about programming. Of course, but in programming, I think it's m very much easier to find like problems that you can get hands yes, on with yes, like of because you can build something for your yes, you mom something or something i don't stuff know happens when you do things and mathematics is more about here i present you this number and this number is the amount of groceries you should buy because that's exactly like, yeah, I, I get it i absolutely get it it's a, it's a we humans are primitive like we want something tangible it's something that we can touch or something that we can see like oh this is actually doing something and in math that can be very hard yep so after those two courses, I quitted and then... Uh, you quit the, your university education yep. because you loved this thing so much. Yeah, I really felt this is the thing I should go for yep. and should continue studying. Uh, so, and that was like not part of the continuation of no, the math the program. The rest is mathematics, right? Exactly. So then I quitted and then I also felt a little bit university <laughs> might not be my place. It's... Uh, yeah, it really takes an effort to, if you are not the genius, to uh, succeed with your 
university studies, I think at least. It takes a lot of time because you need to put really hard work uh, into there, yes. uh, which makes sense, of course. But uh, I felt let's go for something uh, lighter. Something <laughs> nice. Let's 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 take uh, we're at 10 now. Let's pull it down to seven and like make yeah. it make it easier on ourselves. So, so w what did you do then? Uh, so I applied for um, this two year. Uh, I don't know what do you call it in English, but like I think it's open college or okay, maybe. education. Yeah, yep. it's where you get educated into a specific things such as exactly, and it's more l less theory and more practical exactly. hands on. I would say. Uh, yep. So I applied for one of those, uh, which was I had like few options. I would say so the one uh, that I had to pick or that I picked at least was uh, more programming combined with electronics or electricity science I would say yeah so electrical yeah. engineering exactly yeah uh, so the like it advertised itself like being at least half half software program engineering and yeah. then electricity yeah. uh, but turned out to be very heavy on the electricity electricity side. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm so guessing that they found one teacher and didn't find the other teacher. Uh, yeah, there were a bit... Because that's the problem with these... Uh, there were different teachers, but uh, yeah, yes. it was not so well organized, I would say. No, uh, they, these educations are usually very half-baked, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it was weird. We even had courses like... Uh, Cooking. <laughs> no, <laughs> but like not business English, but English. Uh, English. Yeah, where we learned words like uh, jack that you use to uh, replace the wheel on a car. And, like, I remember that word specifically. Wow. Like, why, why should we learn <laughs> this kind of English <laughs> when I just want to program? Uh, yeah, and then we did a lot of, uh, oh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, where you measure electronic signals and uh, just create those circuit boards and uh, yeah soldering uh, for like you, you basically okay i yeah. i, I kind of get what you're going so for. i felt that i was in the wrong place you were in uh, the wrong place on yeah. this one so this course was or program was two years and uh, i like i really didn't have anything else to do if i would quit so i finished the first year even though i know that i wouldn't continue the next year uh, and then I applied for the third education then, uh, which was, uh, yeah, it was called Microsoft Certified Microsoft.net Developer or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and that was perfect. Uh, so web development. Uh, yeah, it was uh, ASP.net uh, focused, mm -hmm. uh, but it was like, it was called Certified uh, Developer or .NET Developer and it was basically just uh, taking those um, books that you uh, buy if you want to get certified. Yeah. Uh, so it was the first book was uh, C sharp uh, .NET framework uh, 3.5 maybe 3 or something. Yeah. Uh, and then we just did all the books that you would otherwise have uh, done if you were would like to get certified so it wasn't really very friendly like I don't know it was a little bit too structured around the certification I would say yeah it wasn't that flexible in the sense that maybe if you would have uh, thought about how to organize a uh, nice programming course over so two years you would have taken another angle I think but okay. now it was more Okay, here's the book. Now we follow all the rules and stuff in the framework that we need to uh, know uh, if we want to get certified. Uh, yay! That's so <coughs> great. That's exactly. You see this? I, I hear this in these stories so many. T I've heard them so so many times. People reached out about different courses where, like, they they have they're they're excited about the about learning programming. They get into the course. They get in there, and the teacher is some dude they kind of just found on the street who's basically reading off of some manual that he has. There is yeah. like, you c they said like it's some of them have asked. Like we, ha I had the similar issue in my previous course when I did this, where they were like questioning the the staff at the school. Like I don't think that this person actually knows how to program. 
Yeah, but uh, it was okay for me. Uh, it yeah, didn't no, uh, harm me that much. I actually took three certificates, I think, with Microsoft. Three? Micro so you triple certified with Microsoft? Yeah, I think so. I <laughs> took the framework, I took the ASP.NET and SQL Server, I think. Uh, but, uh, like, so the downside like, with that... Very high, you're, you, you must be highly ranked in the, the C-sharp religion, like the <laughs> Church of the C-sharp. Most likely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe they have many, many hierarchies. I don't know. Java uh, just has, like, in one or two, I think. Okay. And I'm, I'm not on that scale at all. I don't even have a certain... Yeah, they, ha they have some levels in, in Microsoft, I think, <laughs> which you can take, like... When do you get the Pope hat? Like how how far up uh, the chain do you, do you need to like learn Blazor these these days or no no exactly like <laughs> <laughs> you, you give me the face what's Blazor I don't know what Blazor is no no I just fine let's okay. let's, let's, let's ig ignore that for now but yeah. so you took three three certificate was this also the same sort of education like as a two year curriculum and yep. yeah okay cool uh, so you finished this edu you finished this education right yes. Uh, and then included in the education is like you should go out to companies and work uh, yes, for them, like internship. Yeah, internships, yes. Uh, so, yeah. Did I you find an internship? Uh, yep, uh, I did. And uh, the thing was, ah, let's skip that. But um, yeah, I found one in a, in a Gothenburg company. Uh, they were measuring uh, the temperature of water in uh, buildings because uh, if the water gets to like a too low temperature, yep. then they can grow bacteria and stuff. Yep. So they had measurement uh, hardware or equipment for that and they built a software uh, program uh, okay. on top of that. Uh, but so that was that in C-sharp? Uh, yep, it what? was. What? Uh, C-sharp.net. Uh, and yeah, that internship was okay. Um, it was okay. It was okay. It was yeah. okay. okay. The tasks was uh, yeah, perhaps not the most fun. Uh, we built a lot of reports, so we really got those internship tasks uh, yeah. when we got there. Such as, uh, oh, you're going to make this really weird thing where you're going to do this what? Like, what, could you give me an example? Because I know s a few things that... Yeah, you, should, you usually, as an intern, you get stuck with really either really bad stuff or things that are very trivial. Yeah, but uh, since they had a lot of different metrics, yep. we built reports, uh, and it included like SVG, uh, SVG <laughs> images in the report. I think okay. it was a more live report on a web page. Okay, uh, so you uh, did actually do coding. Yeah, yeah, good. I, I did. Because uh, some yeah. interns they can get into like the worst part. Worst, uh, worst I've heard is that. The, they basically were just sitting next to this person who didn't actually care about them all that much, so they didn't really get to do anything. And when they did get, get to do something, it was usually just do manual testing on the website. Okay. It's like yeah. they're not even learning programming. It's uh -oh. the okay, so this this was actual programming. Yeah. But okay. uh, the biggest, uh, uh, I don't know, negative side on it was I didn't f thrived at the workplace. Like, yeah. uh, yeah, the people were okay, but I didn't felt that I find my found my spot there. No, you didn't feel uh, connected to the workspace. Uh, uh, working not so much. Yeah. But then I was asked to do summer uh, working over the summer. So at that company. At that company, yeah. and yeah, I felt like okay, of course I can do that. So uh, even though I felt it was, yeah, perhaps not my workplace in the future, I I did that. Uh, but at the same time, yes. So this was in uh, like March, April, where I, when I was there. Uh, then I also replied to an ad uh, on uh, a Swedish recruitment company, Academic Work. They recruit students, yeah. basically, uh, uh, to this company called Asivo. Uh, so I went there on an interview. It felt uh, really great, I would say. Uh, so it was a good interview, but then I didn't hear anything for uh, weeks. Uh, and then this other company came and asked me for a summer job, and I uh, accepted that. Yep. Uh, and then, like a few weeks after that, this uh, company, Asivo, calls me again and uh, calls me directly, basically. And uh, yeah, just. Uh, listen me out if I were interested to work in the summer. I said, okay, I can do that because I accepted another uh, offer. Yeah. Um, and the fun thing is, I 
<coughs> I think because we talked about uh, uh, this afterwards, like when they called me after that long time, I, w I acted or I was a little bit surprised genuinely, like it felt so good on the interview. Why ha haven't you called me like yeah, until yeah, yeah. now? And they laughed about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, we instead agreed on me starting in the autumn. Yeah. Uh, and that was parallel with uh, studies uh, because I had one year left then in school. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you but st so you spend one year and then you get a job basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah, before your education is done. Exactly. Yeah. So I get this job at uh, Asivo where I just do extra work. Uh, I think I worked one day or two days in the start yeah. uh, because the school and the uh, like uh, you you didn't have to attend like every day in school no it was more loosely you had course days and then you had yeah, self work exactly. and stuff like that yeah. but that's usual that's common no? exactly so I, I started to work there uh, extra and then of course i did my internship there uh, the second, second and third, yeah, uh, because we had uh, had three internship periods, uh, and yeah, everything felt super good, and that's where I ended up and stayed for eight years plus. And uh, at uh, this company, what were you you were doing C sharp de uh, dot net development? Yes, it was dot net yeah. development uh, with yeah dot net ASP dot net uh, SQL Server. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we were hosting our stuff on our own servers, but it was. Microsoft uh, yep. I IIS. And but wh wh what were you working on? Uh, we were building a planning and schedule software for retail chains. Okay. Uh, so basically planning uh, the staff in the retail uh, stores. Mm -hmm. uh, so scheduling staff members so that, you know, you want to come in on a Sunday, then that's uh, being planned or scheduled or... Exactly. Yeah. And the main idea was to Basically, the stores would uh, just give the system input of a budget of hours. Okay. And then we have uh, had all the employee uh, employee agreements as well. Yeah. Like how much are you contracted and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then you would more or less push a button with a set of rules, of course. Uh, like, uh, yeah. An employer shouldn't work uh, seven days uh, in a row, and uh, yep. certain yeah, restrictions, many many rules, yep. uh, and then you would push the button, and we would create or generate the schedule for you. Uh, so, yeah, basically taking time off the store manager to not having to deal with the planning uh, themselves, yep. uh, uh, and yeah, create a smart schedule. Uh, basically, and then also complying with all the work rules, like you need to rest uh, this amount of time between yeah, shifts, and there are and minimum three hours shift. You can't work less than that, and blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. A lot uh, of complexity, I suppose. Exactly, and uh, also then the store manager report to region managers and to the headquarters. So um, uh, we were like doing reports of the costs for the stores basically. So we had the salary of all the employer employees. Yeah. So then we could calculate whatever shift costs and uh, if there were uh, like uh, overtime and that kind of stuff. So basically they would be able to track what every store cost okay. uh, in terms of money. And then they could just experiment with, okay, what happens if we, uh, I don't know, if you move things around exactly decrease around. the contract time okay maybe you can't do that but uh, no, no, basically I, I, but i get it like it, it gives you a very it's, it's an efficient way to, for you to generate different schedules and by sh setting the price on it you know which schedule is going to be more costly for yeah. you and which one is going to be more cheap for you which is a great way to get gain ins insights i imagine that this company is, well, was doing pretty well because i can imagine that this is a very popular product yeah it was uh or did they shut down no, no, or it is <laughs> uh, <coughs> every time, like, or every time, I don't know what to call it, when you go into a negotiation, negotiate a deal with a retail chain, basically, yeah. it was us and another company that always was the competitors, yeah. uh, I would say. Uh, but also Sweden retail stores, it's... Uh, 
somewhat big market, but not the biggest market. No, so of course not. like I mean, at some point you just chase the, the smaller same. and the same and yeah. So uh, we we expanded to Norway uh, and Finland a bit. So and still now still I still. now I don't know if they expanded more or if they're still yeah. in uh, in Sweden. But uh, so so you were there for eight years, yes. and then you started working here, right? Yep. So what made you feel like <coughs> you, because you seem to be very happy? Did you just want a change of scenery, or what was going on? Like, what made you change the next time? Uh, I would say, mm, like mainly one thing. Uh, so my boss at this place uh, was like a great programmer, but his was coming from the consultant business. Yep. Uh, and then we had another guy that worked there when I was arriving. It was basically those two. And also a third guy who quitted quite uh, soon after I started. Yep. Uh, so I would say I was taught uh, a programming style where we really didn't know how to architect or build build a nice architecture of our system. Yeah, it was more consultancy minded, where you fix things and that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so ship it quickly rather than do it well. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I learned that way of programming. Uh, I would say. Uh, and then I'm starting uh, like a whole new layer of my understanding of you is just opening up here now because uh, you, uh, you know it, it wasn't even 20 minutes ago where you were talking about oh we should be better <laughs> at testing or quality insurance and stuff like that yeah. so so you started to resent a little bit or you started to feel uncomfortable with this way of working that you just hacked things together all the time uh, a little bit yes uh, uh, but in the end, it worked out pretty well for us. But of course, you were we making money. Uh, obviously. Yes, yes, uh, and def that's the definitely. That's and then, like, and that's the thing, right? Yeah, that's the you king can, you thing. You can make money off of horrible <laughs> code. Yeah, but as a programmer, after a while, you start to it hurts. feel yes. a little bit yes. um, care about those things. But I would say, like, main issue was that we, the the school that I was recruited from. It went so well with me, I would say. So we just went back to that school and recruited new students. Uh, so when I left, I don't know, it was four or five more people, uh, developers, Yeah. perhaps four. Uh, but the main issue is that they came directly from school. So they learned everything from me and from the other people that was there. So there was no recruit or like new employees with another perspective of things we like they were we would just applied the old yeah. way on them uh, so yeah so you're basic but you're training okay you're training your own people which means exactly. that they will just be a reflection of your own value system and since you don't have any other people from other areas or experiences you're go never gonna exactly yeah I guess. So, so that was my main problem that I I need other people to learn from and like I yeah. uh, to collaborate exactly. Uh, so that was the the and reason then you I got stuck with me. How does yeah. that feel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I no. <laughs> <laughs> you coward. I, 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 I tried to pull a joke, but I don't know <laughs> really how to do it well in English as well. That's yeah. fine, dude. Like it, it, it's completely fine. Okay, yeah. I'm just messing with you. I'm super happy to work with you now. Oh. I, I am for sure. Oh. I'm getting all. I don't know. I can, 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 I, I'm not sure if I can blush, but if I could, I would. <laughs> thank you so much. But this is the thing, dude. I've been saying this to you so many, many times that, like when it comes to software engineering and so forth some people have this idea that all right the best thing for you is to just be one type of person or that there's only one like a programmer is this type of person who is just extremely good at 
logical thinking or that they follow orders or they just get the stuff done and so forth then yes to a point that is true but there's also an enormous amount of value in having people that complement each other so one person might be very very good at just you know analyzing code or like just sticking with by the rules and just getting stuff done and another person might be more of an idea person can do the work and so forth and uh, they these two people complement each other and this is this is exactly why I enjoy working with you so much because the f fact of the matter is that I just as everybody else have certain weaknesses and those weaknesses you complement in a very very I mean I don't know how many times you like I like to say this I'm a very good producer of bugs and you're a very good <laughs> identifier of bugs that's very right. and fixer of them that's I mean this is that's just the dynamic I will cr produce shitty code and you will fix it <laughs> all <I> right like <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect yeah and I'm at least I have all. something to do, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that keeps you all, and you, you, you get to be happy because you feel like you're contributing, and I can just mess around. That's exactly how it should work. <laughs> yeah. But so, so that was the main thing. You, you needed to. You weren't necessarily unhappy with the company. It was more about you felt that you didn't get the stimulation that you wanted because that I can relate to. Because this is like this is the only thing that matters to me. I don't. I honestly got. I couldn't care less how much you pay me if the like, as long as it's like a decent wage and I get the opportunity to work with people where I feel like these people will teach me something I will learn stuff from being here so that's the thing that you found here at this company right or that you felt that this was an opportunity for that exactly yes cool so what would you say then like from from your path so forth and like your career and so forth like, what is like? What is the trickiest part about being a programmer? What is the hardest part? The hardest part. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Perhaps build the right thing. I would say. What do you mean by building the right thing? This is a very uh, good answer, I think. Uh, so one part of it would be get the right requirements, like in in that input. And mm -hmm. you need the right requirements, and you From need your stakeholders to exactly, yeah. and you need to question those. Good, yeah, the, if you ask the right questions, exactly, yeah. uh, because quite often you end up actually building not what you realize afterwards that we would have built you or something. Build the thing that is on the paper, but that is not what the person, the stakeholder, actually meant. Yeah. Perhaps, and also perhaps not what we realize that, that the customer actually oh, wants. Yes, we exactly. get the we get the requirements wrong from from the customer. It becomes a game of Chinese whisper. So the customer, you, you think that they want this, and then the stakeholder says, "Okay, I'm going to write down this," and then you read it, and you think you think a third thing, and all of a sudden you're actually building something that might not be correct. Is that what you're? A little bit, yes, exactly. Uh, so, in that sense, and also from the technical perspective like you should always build for today in some sense like yes. from what you have and where you are now but also you should try to look a bit in the future yes. but how much should you look into the future yes. and that balance it's also hard to build the right thing yes uh, i would say it becomes an <coughs> i would like to say it's a little bit like now i'm gonna sound really corny but the jedi the jedi um, jedi thing where you you can't see far into the future you can just see a few moments into the future and now you're talking star oh, wars I'm sorry, or something dude. Okay, I <laughs> i've seen the first movie yeah okay great <laughs> you've seen the first star wars movie <laughs> Some people will be amazed that you're not more of a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm what I'm trying to say here is that I completely agree with you that like, there is a there is a sweet spot to like there's over engineering and then there's prudent planning where as you were saying sometimes it's it's a hard thing to figure out okay I'm I'm doing this thing here today but if I don't consider what's going to happen tomorrow, I might actually cause a lot of problems tomorrow. And I can invest today and just make sure that we're building this in a little bit more of a flexible way. But at the same time, you don't want to think, OK, next year we're going to do this thing. So I should probably start building my own framework today because to next year we're going to do this. Like it's a, it's a balancing, as you said, it's a balancing act. You, you need to peek a little bit f into the future just a few days, a few weeks, a few months, something like that, 
but at the same time you don't want to over plan it so that you actually create shittier code today than you actually needed to. Yep. And so th these are the two things for you. These are the most complicated things. Learn, yep. actually know what to build and yep. to make the right judgment call today. Yeah, exactly. I would say that. Uh, other tri tricky things, uh, of course, stay up to date is a bit yes, tricky. It should be relevant. Exactly. There's so much stuff going on. There. Everything is new all the time. And everybody wants to use everything, especially in front end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And. Uh, I would say also from being a junior developer or like the first years, you always, if you trying to find out an answer on a not so straightforward problem, yeah. the answer that you get back is always, it depends. Yes. It yes. depends like, yeah, what but details in your requirements and yes. uh, what you're building, that kind of stuff. And as a novice or a junior, you are completely blank. Like, uh, you don't know. depends on what. Okay, what parameters sh parameters should I put into this equation? And uh, but will you would you say that once you learn these things, you start to get it? Like you start to understand the mindset. A little bit, and you start to understand why. Even now, when you someone, if a junior comes and asks you, what are you gonna say? You're gonna say it depends. A little bit uh, like that, but yes. I, I'm also the kind of developer that, w n like, I would say never would get to the. Uh, I don't know. I would never uh, have the full full of that wisdom. Yeah, okay. Like you, the full, you wouldn't have completely understand that. Exactly. I, get it. Uh, okay. I think you are better in that sense <laughs> because, yeah, you think more about programming in that way, whereas I, I just want to get stuff done more. So I focus more on producing. Yeah. Of course, I take into account like those thoughts and. Uh, yes. But this is th this is the thing I was telling you, dude. So I was talking to Red the other day, and he had this book where he was saying that okay, so you, like they defined in this a it's one was a software engineering engineering management type of book, right? And they were defining things such as okay, you have a superstar, and then you have a rock star, and a superstar is a person who wants to change things, or wants to innovate things, and wants to question things and make things improve things, right? And then you have a rock star who are the sort of people who they want to focus on, they they get enjoyment from just doing a really good job, they want to be the best at their thing, right? And they just want to produce and produce and produce. You and I have like everybody is, has a range to these things, but we are, as I said, like you're you're more of a rock star and I'm more of a superstar in that regard. Where I'm not saying that one is we're binary here; it's a range, right? But that means that we complement each other in a very in, ex in an extremely great fashion. Because I can tell that from working with you, you went from as you were saying, kind of just getting stuff done to now you have your own, like you have your own ideas, you pull me over and like for a code, like some pair programming and like, I'm thinking we should do this because that's gonna help us with this and that. This is something that I noticed about you. And the same thing happens to me. Like I know that when I now do code reviews and things of this nature, I try even harder to make sure that I'm adding relevant, useful comments. I'm really reading the code and like making sure, like even pulling out the branches and like just as you used, you you do. I didn't do that until I saw you do it. I okay. honestly got. I was just <laughs> reading the code. I was like, maybe yeah, actually no, John, he's actually has something here. Maybe I should actually pull out the branch and just do some exploring. But you have to do that, otherwise you can't navigate, and you have to. Uh, okay, like, all right. That's not how I thought about it. I was yeah. kind of like, all right. I'm just going to make sure that this works. But at some, in some cases, when you're doing a code review, it actually is very important that you understand a bigger picture to actually understand that code. Yep. Uh, but and I didn't do that, and I n now I do. I get it. But uh, that's the way I do code reviews, at least, because I want to also take into account like the, f the entire flow and like what will the logic be in the other end here. Yeah. Uh, and that's that, that is great. Uh, the, it takes longer to it do takes that. It takes longer time, it takes yes. Longer <laughs> time, especially for complicated features, yeah. but it is it also makes the it also increases your knowledge and it also increases the accuracy and relevancy of the comments that you are going to to put forward. Yeah. And also if you have in some situations more domain knowledge, it feels like it's your duty a bit to also make sure everything connects together or yeah uh, yeah not just reading that code file uh, where were we 
No, we were saying. Yeah, I said you were doing great. We were <laughs> saying that basically you find that the the hardest parts about being a software engineer is number one, you feel like getting the right specifications, as in building the right thing. Second thing was that you felt that it might be tricky to predict how much premature, how much optimization you should do. I can do to not do too much, but at the same time not like hack things together. And finally, being a junior developer having that age-old thing happen to you over and over where every senior whenever you ask them a question they say it depends yeah. and i like that you make mention that because for me that is something that i try to fight as much as possible you may know that i like i try to help some people out with some silly little videos that i make and stuff like that right and in like i've always I've to, i took that stance early on like i will tell you that oh it depends but i will do my darndest to try to explain to you why it depends and not just say, oh, it depends, and then try to shield my, because that's what a software developer, like an experienced software developer do. Like they, they try to shield themselves from making an, like they want to give the accurate, op like the most accurate thing that covers all of the corner cases about something. And that's not useful to a junior developer. What's useful to them is to get a sensation of certainty. Yep. It doesn't have to be an answer that answers every possible version of the question. It's about, taking the common case, the thing that might actually be more, uh, a few of the things at least that are going to be most likely and give a sensation of understanding to the person. It's not about me, it's about the person that I'm trying to help. Yep. It's like, uh, you know, with kids, like if, you, if you're going to explain to a small child how, I don't know, how money works, you're not going to give them an understanding, you're not going to try to explain the stock market to them. <laughs> you're going to explain, oh, these are bills of currency that we trade for goods and services. Ex that's exactly the same thing.